the City of London, a centre of finance whose activities span the world. But for thousands of men and women, these buildings are everyday places where they work. And this young insurance broker, for instance, unnoticed among all the other businessmen who are dressed exactly like him. Typical, you might say. And you would be even more inclined to say so when he buys an evening paper, glances at the sports news on the back page, and goes on his way. But that man is outstanding in surroundings like this. He's cricketer Peter May of Surrey and England. This is 1953, the year when he confirmed his brilliant promise. He played superbly against the Australian tourists. The match and the series depended on the next few minutes, with May at one end, the mainstay of the innings. Dennis Compton scores the winning stroke. England wins. For 20 years, the Australians had held the ashes. That strange trophy, which symbolises the endless struggle between English and Australian teams. At last, the grip was broken. The tests are contests, usually of five matches, between the countries which play international cricket. India, Pakistan, Australia, New Zealand, the West Indies and England. Off to Australia went Len Hutton's men. Peter May sailing with them as vice captain, already being groomed for leadership. In Australia, the 1954-55 season saw England struggling in a closely fought match to retain the Ashes. The critics didn't rate their chances very high when Australia won the first test. And it looked as though they were to be proved right. But in the second game in the series, Peter May took control. He batted extremely well, scoring a century, which paved the way for an English victory. As a batsman, Peter May is regarded as being one of the finest players England has had. At Cambridge University, he won his blue for both soccer and cricket. Indeed, while at university, he was chosen to play against the South Africans and scored a century. He can play equally well off both front and back feet, and this enables him to face all sorts of bowling in all sorts of conditions. And he has the ideal batsman's temperament too. Confident, yet careful. Aggressive, yet calm. He is what the critics like to call the complete batsman. England won the series and kept the ashes. And home came the vice-captain, leading the triumphant team to a warm welcome. Only twice were they beaten in Australia, and not at all on the short tour of New Zealand. In 1956, Peter May acted as best man at the wedding of England player Colin Cowdrey. Another famous cricketer, the Reverend David Shepherd, conducted the service. The long room at Lord's is the very heart of cricket in Britain. Here are kept trophies and memorials of the game from years gone by. This famous test match ground has for many years been the home of the Marylebone Cricket Club. In its early days, the MCC was the stronghold of cricket and sponsored the first team to tour overseas. By historical accident, the club became the sport's governing body and the official representative of England in international contests. Once again, Australia's team visited England. 1956 saw the historic struggle renewed. In the second test at Lord's, with a day and a half left, it seemed there was a chance England would win. May was playing a captain's innings. In the long room, the senior members watched with enjoyment. Here at last was a brilliant young batsman to rank as high as any of them could remember. But this was to be Australia's day, and they were one match up in the series. Peter May's own wedding was in April 1959. 
teammates and other cricketing friends turned out in force. The Reverend David Shepherd, famous spin bowler Jim Laker, Godfrey Evans, the wicketkeeper, as well as the dashing batsman Dennis Compton. The bride, 24-year-old Virginia Gilligan, the daughter of a famous cricketing family. Both her father and her uncle had played for England. Appropriately, the young couple met at Peter's first test in 1951. A setback to Peter May's cricketing career came in 1959 when he had an operation and took a long time to recover completely from its effects. In his pleasant Surrey home were many souvenirs which reminded him of an interest packed 10 years of first class cricket. So throughout his convalescence his thoughts were not far from cricket and he was determined to get back to the game. The following spring however he had to announce that his recovery was not complete and that he would not be playing during the coming season. For a year, Peter May took it easy, relaxing in this quiet, friendly home. There's always gardening to be done. Or a small maintenance job on the car. Before their marriage, Peter's wife Virginia was a well-known horsewoman and is still interested in riding. So in the paddock behind the house, they keep several horses to be ridden whenever possible. Peter May in action. Already he has taken his place with the greatest names in the game. Names like Bradman, Hammond, Hobbs and Ranji. Critics call him the complete batsman. And the statistics bear them out. In test cricket alone, Peter May has scored more than 4,000 runs, 13 centuries and a top score of 285 not out against the West Indies. A complete recovery of his health has restored him to first class cricket. Leading his team, he is businesslike and clear-headed, refusing to be flustered by events. And he has that important gift of the true captain, a definite will to win. Whether at the batting crease or at home, whatever his surroundings, Peter May remains the same. He is quiet but friendly. And his keen sense of humour goes well with the clear, decisive mind, which is essential for every international cricket captain. At home, he's a husband and father like so many others, enjoying its comfort at the end of a busy day at the office, as he talks to his wife and daughter. On the cricket field, he's incomparable, a brilliant batsman and a gifted captain. And he's still in his early thirties. So what further brilliance will be brought to the game he loves by Peter May?